Hey everybody, everybody see all right? Cool, there's a lot of little things on here and if you missed those, you missed the whole talk. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so I'm Dwayne, real quick, I make things, I like crochet, I like, well, we've got a knitter up here, that's awesome. I'll talk to you later about that. Um, I love karaoke, so if anybody knows a karaoke bar that's open tonight in Asheville, let me know. Uh, and we'll go do that after the party. But the slides for this and everything else I do are out on my website, mcduane.com, which is 2016 theme, unmodified, beautiful, beautiful theme. I'm on Twitter, I love Twitter, MC Duane out there as well, you're sensing a theme there. But uh, I'm also here from behalf of Pantheon, but I don't have really time to talk about them. We're out there in the hallway, come talk to us, we love you. Uh, real quick, I just wanna know who's in the room, just in a sense of like, who saw this on the schedule and like, I'm coming in the room for that talk. Wow, that's a good number, that's more than I expected for a lightning talk session. Um, who here is a full-time developer? What you do is develop. Awesome, you're gonna get a lot out of this talk. Who here is a designer? Awesome, you're gonna get a lot out of this talk. Who's a content editor or writer? Okay, that's actually what I wrote this talk for, so everybody else, bear with me. Um, <laughs> uh, but this is a true story. This is, this is, I was doing a project management thing inside of Pantheon and having a bad time connecting to YouTube, apparently. And I would have these spreadsheets, or not spreadsheets, but I had the document that laid out exactly the way I like to lay out a document. And then I pasted it into Gutenberg and it looked like this. I was like, what the, okay, that's not what I wrote, because what I originally wrote was this, which, you know, it's, it's, it's indented, it's, you know, laid out with numbers there and, you know, ordered lists. I like numbered, ordered lists. And then just it didn't know what to do with any of that. And that's just tragic, because there's, this is a solved problem. Because in my research for this, Someone said that much more eloquently than I ever could, uh, what I need is a universal format that just allows my content to be transported. I want to write once and transport everywhere. And turns out I'm the only person that wanted this because we've had Markdown for quite a few years now and that's what this talk is all about. So if you go to Wikipedia, it says this, and nothing wrong there, it's just that's a bunch of words. What does that really even mean? Well, hopefully by the end we'll, we'll, we'll suss that out. Maybe these guys. I think it's important to stop and remember that all of the stuff we talk about wasn't made by like them or another. It was made by us. We're the open source community. Everyone's sitting here. You've never touched code in your life. Welcome. You were part of the movement that is open source. And these guys said to each other, hey, there's got to be a better way to do this thing we're doing. Let's, let's invent a structure that will let us transform this notation into beautiful XHTML or just HTML. The guy on the right, Aaron went on to uh, be credited as founder of Reddit. Uh, the guy on the left, John Gruber, is still doing well, but doing other stuff with his life. And this is it. This is pretty much the rest of this talk. We're going to explain what the heck you're looking at here. On the right hand of my screen, right side of the screen up here, um, that's Markdown. That is the notation. So if you already got this and you know what I'm talking about, uh, you can go get coffee early or whatever you want. Um, otherwise, we're going like, to pretty much walk through this and explain how it got to be the thing on the right and then talk a little bit about Gutenberg, which is definitely associated with this. So Markdown is already everywhere. It's on sites like as far as, you know, like GitHub. Who here goes, has ever seen a readme page on GitHub that are like, wow, that is not styled at all? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of GitHub readme pages like that. Whoever sees a, get me, a GitHub readme page is like, that is gorgeous. I honestly like the WPCLI one, speaking of the WPCLI. Uh, and if you go look at the code on this thing, what you see, well, if I look at the raw, make it a little bit bigger. Well, we got this mix of these weird terminologies and HTML. Because for a lot of intents and purposes, oh, <laughs> no worries. I'll get some off a little bit there. Okay, good to know. Um, I think I didn't justify all the stuff to the right. All right, uh, or to the left. Um, but yeah, it, to the browser, it doesn't really care, uh, depending on what system you're using. But if you look at like a system that will interpret Markdown, it's the same thing as interpreting HTML. Stack Exchange, uh, they have that little thing over there on the right that says um, how to use the how to use Markdown for their site. Because this is a little bit different than what we saw here. It'll be a little different than what we see here in Reddit. And it'll be a little bit different than what we see in Gutenberg. Welcome back to those. Um, 
That's because Markdown is not a language. It's not like PHP. It's not like JavaScript. There's no official body that says, this is Markdown. Use it this way or don't. Uh, it's an idea that a couple guys generated and said, wouldn't it be cool if we had the shorthand notation? And yes, you can go to daringfireball.net, which is where all of the original code is that Gruber and Aaron came up with that said, how do you extend it and what this, you could do with this formulation. But important thing to realize, if you get into this and like, hey, this doesn't work here the same way it does over here, it might not. How they interpreted that might be a little bit different. So know where you're writing and know how they're interpreting all of this. But it's everywhere on the internet. Once you start, once you see Markdown, you can't unsee it. And it's just how to, how to write HTML really, really fast, including if you're using this thing called Gutenberg. Because Matt Mullenweg was asked, what's your favorite part of the upcoming Gutenberg release? This is back at WordCamp Europe last year. And he said, the fact you can copy paste Markdown. Like, but he didn't think about it. That was like the first thing he said. Because that's how powerful this is. But, but why is this really powerful? Well, we'll get to that. But let's actually get to what I told you we're going to do, and that's learn Markdown. So if you have a computer in front of you, prepare to take some notes, because that will be your cheat sheet, and you'll never have to look up another cheat sheet ever again. If you're writing things down, actually, you have a beautiful setup there. Does that transfer uh, to elec anything electronically, or you got to manually? OK, just a paper notebook. Paper notebook is actually brilliant. You can write. You, you can write. <laughs> you can write Markdown in a, on paper. This is one of the beautiful things about it. But if you want to, like a fancy text editor that will like do what I did in that previous slide, where I wrote my Markdown on one side and then I got the output on the other side, um, all these work. And there's no one winner here. Um, and if you're like, I don't want to download nothing, go to Dillinger.io and see if it works today. Um, but StackEdit.io is the same thing. There's just online versions of this where you can just go type in one half of the screen, and the other half of the screen produces this beautiful HTML. You can actually copy paste anywhere. Um, or you can just write wherever you got. Like, I write a lot in Text Wrangler. Yes, outdated Text Wrangler. I love it because uh, of the way it works. In fact, this is the blog I'm, ta I'm writing right now for this camp, including all my notes. And I'm just throwing Markdown as I go. And it's already going to transform for me when I'm done. Before we go any farther, before I lose anyone else, does everyone know what these things are? Does this, is this unfamiliar? And there is no shame whatsoever in the world to say, I'm not sure what that is, what this HTML thing is. Anybody? I don't know what that is. You know, that's cool, man, because you got to start somewhere. The internet's written in this thing called HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. And these are the common elements. So if you see something with, like, it's bigger at the top, that's probably because they used a header, uh, and like italics and bold. And these are little symbols that, if you look at the code, inspect element. It'll show you like how the page was built and what those things actually mean. If you don't know HTML, go learn it. Codecademy has a brilliant free class. A lot of things have free classes. And it will make you a much better, no matter what you're doing, it'll make you a much better web professional to know HTML deeply. Because at the end of the day, that's all it is. The JavaScript and PHP are just rendering HTML elements at the end of the day. That's all it really is. Um, headers. So this is how we actually do it. Now that you've gotten your editor up and running or a piece of paper in front of you. So headers, starting out with my favorite piece. Um, one asterisk, or not asterisk, one hashtag equals an H1. Two hashtags equals an H2. Three hashtags equals a? H3. Four? Yeah, four, exactly. Um, or uh, with H1s and H2s, there's this weird underline thing that works in some markdown editors and not others. Um, but it's the same idea. Why? Why are headers important? Anybody? Hierarchy. Hierarchy, but why is that important? Accessibility. Accessibility. That's the answer I love the best. SEO. Which what? SEO. SEO, sure. That, I would much rather focus on accessibility, and if we get SEO as a byproduct, that's amazing. I mean, then the other way around. Um, but yeah, your pages should be laid out semantically. H1 should be followed by H2s, which should be followed by H3s, and so on and so forth. Make it easy for a screen reader to pick up and see what your page is. If you ever want to be horrified, go to pe like something you wrote two years ago and then turn on a screen reader. It's horrifying. Uh, but it'll make you a better developer if you do that. If you want to put italics on something, throw an underscore on either side. Oh, I forgot to mention the one earlier that I don't have a slide for. Uh, who here uses Slack? Yeah, you, that accepts Markdown. So all of the stuff I'm showing you here is how you can stylize Slack messages their version of it. Again, learn what they, how they actually implemented it. Like they, I love their underscore and their, um, 
uh, not underscore, I love their uh, strike through as well, but I don't have a slide for that. Uh, bold, if you want to make something bold, throw two asterisks on both sides. That's it. That's the entire how you make something bold. So if you like opening brackets and typing B, you know, do that. But um, you could also like bold italic things, just combine them. And in all my testing, I've never been able to tell the difference between putting the asterisks on the outside of the underscore or the inside. As long as they're both there and it, like, it properly closes itself, you're fine. Um, this is actually the most practical one I have that I use a lot is ordered lists and unordered lists. I like lists. It's easy to organize information. Um, who's ever tried to, in Gutenberg, create a nested list three items deep? Did you succeed? No, I don't know there's a way to succeed with that. Uh, tab messes everything up. Shift tab causes other problems with my machine. Um, I don't know if it's just my machine, it's just that's how I test on. Uh, how you do this in, in Markdown is if you want an unordered list, asterisk the thing, asterisk the next thing, asterisk the next thing. If you want to do a nest in there, tab over one and keep doing the same thing. You want to nest one more in there, another tab over. You want to nest in further, another tab over. If you want to nest again, another tab over. You can nest infinitely deep with ordered lists, not that that's a great idea, but you can. Ordered list is just numbers, one dot, two dot, three dot, whoever many you got. Same exact principle works. Now this one, you can't like change up the styling. You're just making an ordered list. You're not trying to say, okay, if it's three nested in, then we're using Roman numerals. But you'll have an ordered list that you can throw styling on later, depending on what your actual presentation layer is, is gonna do. But creating the ordered list, very quick. One, two, three. Uh, links, who likes opening their, Angular brackets and saying hey, href, and then filling in the rest. It's kind of fun, but uh, no, it's, it's, it's not. Um, <laughs> uh, open, close, square, open, close, parentheses, and that is how links work. In fact, here is uh, the link for where we went last night with speaker dinner, archetype brewing. That's the link, and that is the words. That is a link. That will transform into a magical link when I don't have to touch a href ever again. Um, you can also do this other really cool thing that works kind of like footnoting. So you can say link or a text and another square bracket beside it to put a link to where that link will actually end up going. You can do this with numbers. It doesn't matter what text you put in there. I just said link for a word. But any text, like the number one, then down at the bottom in a square bracket you have a one, colon, and then the address. And so you can create documents that have hundreds of links but you're managing all those links at the bottom of the document, not actually going through the document itself, like in reading within parallel, paragraphs. Comes in handy in certain situations. Um, images. This is actually one of my favorite pieces because it forces alt text. It doesn't force you to fill in the blank, but it's screen, like it's obvious you missed it. Uh, you just do the exact same formula that you do for a link, you just throw a bang in front, um, the exclamation mark, and gives you a link to an image, then that image unfurls. Uh, and that first square bracket, that's your alt text. That's it. So is anyone like completely lost? Is this like anybody? No, this is HTML. If you don't know HTML, yep. If you don't know HTML, sure, I get it. This is, you have to learn that basic because this is a shorthand for that. But um, otherwise, like block quotes, anybody actually use block quotes in their day to day? Like a handful of people, I, I find it useful occasionally, but just it's a, um, a greater than, or is that the less than? It's a closed, uh, closed uh, angle bracket. Um, code, oh, this is the best in Slack. Throw back ticks, back ticks is right above your tilde, or on the same key as the tilde underneath the tilde, so don't hit shift when you hit tilde and you get a back tick. Um, wrap a single tick, back tick on either side of your uh, text, and that becomes code. Put three back ticks in a row on a line and then start a new line. Anything you put between that and the next three in a row back ticks become a code block. Very, very easy to do. And in Slack, this will save you a lot of headache. Say, all right, this variable, so start throwing back ticks around variable names or snippets of code or file names and it'll pop out on the screen and it'll be a little easier to communicate. Um, there's a lot more, but it depends on what you are using and what you're trying to do and what that particular implementation wanted you to do. If you go to Darien Fireball and look at like the extensions they've built, there's full like graphing 
the text-based graphing tools they've built in with like very simple lines and like drawing underscores under or, um, uh, underscores in the right order, you can make these beautiful diagrams that just like magically make themselves by just putting a couple lines together logically that very easily and human readable. At underline all of this, it should be human readable. This is where we get to Gutenberg. So Gutenberg accepts copy paste markdown and it just transforms it on right. That's how I make my blog. And also Gutenberg has this wonderful feature that I have loved ever since I first touched it that if you feed it a naked URL that it knows what to do with, it just does the thing it's supposed to do and form a block around it. So I don't go in and I never have ever actually hit make a new Gutenberg block for YouTube or Twitter and then throw in the URL. I just feed it a naked URL and it's like, oh, I know what to do with this, okay. And it's good. Which means I can take this very simple, just a bunch of text on a screen and turn it into this which is a demo post to have. I think this is all on my site. If you go look at any of my site, uh, posts on my site, this is how they were almost all created. I want to speed through this very last part, but I keep saying it's copy-paste, and it is. And if you like copy-pasting things, go for it. It's awesome. I don't like copy-paste, because uh, it's manual. Um, when I first gave this talk, they advertised it this way, because I had told them in a conversation, like, oh, I do it because I don't have to log in my WordPress site anymore. And they advertise that, so I had to like, write the rest of the slides to justify that. Um, but it's true. I don't want to log in my WP admin ever again because I love the WP CLI. It lets me do everything I need to do, almost everything I need to do, like 99% of it. Um, because it can do this. This is mind-blowingly amazing, and I'm not sure why everyone not, doesn't use this to push content around. WP CLI lets you move content around from point A to point B. It doesn't matter what point A and point B are, which means if you want to like update content on a server that is actually taking orders, you can build new content off of a staging server without ever touching the database directly. Do it the proper WordPress way that's very safe and you'll never blow up your database. Uh, so I started doing this and I, I built a proof of concept around this and this is actually how I make my posts. Is This is, I could, this is the actual WPCLI command to how to make this, this post happen. Pretty complicated, so I built a tool to help me do that. Um, it leverages the WP Markdown plugin, so it will actually transform on write. When you push things in, instead of copy-pasting, it will just say, all right, I accept this file in, and I will just transform it into Markdown for you. And I love that. Um, and I test along the way. So this is super, really complicated. I don't have time to like, get into it here, but I actually write everything locally, like here, store it on GitHub, throw it against a dev server, BHAT tested on the dev server to make sure everything worked the way I thought it would. If that all passes, I ship it to my test server. Then I have visual regression tests to make sure nothing broke upon transport from server to test. And if that all works, I push it to production. Now, if that sounds overly complicated to publish a blog, you're probably right. But <laughs> this saves me hours a month. I'm not kidding. Like This saves me about an hour every time I post a blog because I make a lot of mistakes. And BHAT catching my mistakes is way easier to fix than me fixing them by hand. But that's all based on this idea of markdown. If I didn't have this hyper-transportable way to do a thing, none of this would be possible. And once you start seeing it, it's like regex. You will see it everywhere. You'll, it's just everywhere in the code. It's everywhere in, Mar in, in GitHub. And you can go to my GitHub and get the code for the thing I just talked about if you really want to. Post it now. Um, this is an example proof of concept. But feel free to use it if you want. I'm not supporting you. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. Uh, and there's the rest of the things. And there's a, lot, there's a ton of cheat sheets and tutorials out there. Find what works for you. But seriously, it'll take you 20 minutes if you just sit down and like, I'm going to learn this. And then you'll never go back. It's so much faster to write this way. So thanks, everybody.